the gas can be converted into a liquid through a process called liquefaction. Liquefaction of a gas can occur only when the intermolecular force of attraction between the gas molecules are increased. So, how do we increase the force of attraction? It can be increased in two ways. The first method involves an increase in pressure of the gas at room temperature. When we increase the pressure, the gas molecules come closer to each other. This results in an increase in the intermolecular forces of attraction between the molecules which leads to the liquefaction of gases. The second method involves a decrease in the temperature of the gas. As the gas gets cooled, the kinetic energy of the gas molecules decreases. This results in the decrease of the speed of their random motion and in the increase of the force of attraction between them. This ultimately results in the liquefaction of the gas. Sometimes, we need to use a combination of the both methods to liquefy a gas. For example, carbon dioxide, ammonia, sulfur dioxide and hydrogen chloride can be liquefied either by increasing the pressure or by decreasing the temperature. There are some gases, however, which cannot be liquefied at room temperature even at very high pressure. These gases are called as permanent gases. Hydrogen, helium and oxygen are examples of permanent gases. Irish scientist Thomas Andrews studied the pressure and temperature conditions of liquefaction of several gases. He established that for every gas there is a particular temperature beyond which no matter how much high pressure is applied a gas cannot be liquefied. This temperature is known as critical temperature. Critical temperature TC can be defined as the characteristic temperature of a gas above which any increase in pressure will not result in the liquefaction of the gas. The minimum pressure required to liquefy one mole of a gas at critical temperature is called critical pressure PC. The volume occupied by one mole of a gas at its critical pressure and at critical temperature is the critical volume, Vc of the gas. Tc, Pc and Vc are collectively called the critical constants of the gas. A point where there is no distinction between the liquid and the vapor state of a gas is called the critical point and the gas at this point is said to be in the critical state. In 1861, Andrews studied these critical phenomena of carbon dioxide. In his experiments, he studied the effect of pressure on volume at different temperatures for carbon dioxide. He plotted this variation in volume and pressure at constant temperature, called isotherms, as shown in the graph. Observe the isotherm at 21.5 degrees Celsius. At low pressure, carbon dioxide exists as a gas at point A. On increasing the pressure, 
the volume of the gas decreases along curve AB. The liquefaction of the gas starts at point B and continues along BC, which is evident by the sudden decrease in the volume. Both liquid and gaseous carbon dioxide coexist in equilibrium along the line BC. At point C, the liquefaction is complete and the increase in the pressure has little effect on the volume. This is because liquids are very less compressible. So, a steep curve CD represents only liquid carbon dioxide. When the temperature is raised further, the horizontal portion in the graph becomes smaller and smaller. And at 30.98 degrees Celsius, it is reduced to a point represented by E. This shows that above 30.98 degrees Celsius, carbon dioxide cannot be liquefied at all, no matter how great the applied pressure is. So the critical temperature of carbon dioxide was found to be 30.98 degrees Celsius, while the critical pressure PC is 73.9 atmospheric pressure and the critical volume is 95.6 milliliters. As you can see, all the ends of the horizontal portions of the isotherms are joined to form a dome-shaped curve as shown here. Point A represents the gaseous state, whereas point D represents the liquid state. All points within the dome-shaped area represent the existence of liquid and gaseous carbon dioxide in equilibrium. All gases on isothermal compression exhibits the same behavior as shown by carbon dioxide. Note that it is possible to change a gas into a liquid or a liquid into a gas such that there is always a single state present by altering the conditions of temperature and pressure. For example, in the graph, as we can move from point A to point F vertically by increasing the temperature, point G can be reached by compressing the gas at constant temperature along the 31.1 degree Celsius isotherm. As the curve FG lies above the critical temperature, increase in the pressure doesn't result in the liquefaction of the gas. Hence, curve FG represents the gaseous state. Now, if we move vertically down from point G by lowering the temperature, on crossing the critical isotherm, at point H, we get the liquid state. Thus, at no stage during the process we crossed the two-phase region. This is called the continuity of state. To recognize this continuity, the term fluid is used for either a liquid or a gas. Thus, a liquid can be viewed as a very dense gas. A gas can be liquefied below critical temperature by applying pressure and then it is called the vapor of the substance. For example, carbon dioxide gas below its critical temperature at 30.98 degrees Celsius is called carbon dioxide vapor.